wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are on the face of this very planet, we welcome you this very evening, not minding how terrible things are in terms of the very unrelenting brutality, primitivity and uncivilized conduct of the security forces of the damnable zoological republic we continue to propagate this very gospel of redemption not minding my own i should i say biafran laws in the passing of my father who has now joined his ancestors and also the mourning of my mother who passed away some months ago we must continue because as they told me when they were alive that Biafra is a priority that regardless of whatever may befall them that I must ceaselessly and relentlessly pursue the restoration of Biafra that is the only way that I can honor them and this evening that is exactly what I'm doing it doesn't matter what it is regardless of the magnitude of the difficulty or the problem Biafra is number one, we must serve her in every way that we can, with every sinew, with every strength and with every courage and conviction for Biafra must come in our time or else this generation is a failure as those that went before it. That is why we must spread this very gospel this evening. That is why death cannot hold us back. That is why anything the zoo is doing cannot hold us back. That is why Biafra must be restored, I assure you. We are focused, we are determined, we are resolute, we are unrelenting and nothing can shake us. They know we are unbribable. Even our lawyers cannot be bought. But the stage of cannot be compromised, it cannot be bought. That was why they visited his home. But before I go on any further, I must welcome each and every one of you. Because unlike any other radio station coming out of Africa, Ours is very, very special. This is Radio Biafra, listened to across the entirety of this very planet, every time zone. If you're not listening to us, if you're not on Facebook and you're listening live via Radio Biafra page, you must be on FM in Biafra land. If you are not, you're listening to us on our mobile app. If you're not on Radio Biafra app, you're listening to us via satellite. If you're not on satellite, that is a plethora of platforms through which and by which you can receive Radio Biafra. And we are sure and very certain that Millions of you are tuned in this evening for another expose and address from my humble self that you may know the truth and that truth will set you free. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night to some of you. I welcome you and as I do so, I mightily encourage you to welcome those around you. You cannot be coming to this very fine university and I call it the greatest in the whole world if you don't have your pen and paper and a dose of common sense with you. The zoo cannot understand it because they are not civilized enough to do so. When you tell them the truth, they call it hate speech. When they direct their hatred towards you, it is love by another means and that means always leads to death. That type of charade can never work with this very noble family of IPOB, neither will it work with Biafrans across the entire globe. That is why we maintain our momentum. That is why we insist on strict discipline, absolute and total commitment to the core principles that underpin this very movement we have embarked upon. Absolute and unflinching discipline. If you are not disciplined enough, you cannot be part of us. You can never ever be. Because we have very resourceful, very determined, and well-endowed enemies, I tell you. Without discipline, we will be decimated in a matter of weeks. That is why you will also listen out for a very special announcement this very evening. Because some people who have taken it upon themselves to become insubordinate, they will be dismissed live on air this very evening. We are continuing relentlessly. We are not going to stop, not now, not tomorrow, not next. 
we will embark upon this very journey until victory is assured, until our liberation is complete, until the proclamation of the sovereignty of Biafra have come to endure. Until that happens, we are not relenting, not one iota. We are not going back. Everything we have said have come to pass. Every, um, absolutely everything that I prophesied on this very platform behind this microphone by the grace of Elohim, they have all come to pass. Because we see in the future things that mere mortals cannot see. We see it. Before we proceed, we must pray. And the prayer this evening is going to be slightly different because I lost my father. As you all may know by now, as a result, or should I say as a direct consequence of the activities of the Damnable Zoological Republic in my house on the 14th of September of 2017, widely written about and widely read also, I believe, it has taken its toll on us. But I believe that that is the way the Elohim wants it because when we started this very movement, I said it. That I will sacrifice everything sacrificable to get Biafra, including my parents. Those who were with us from the beginning. Those who started listening to this very noble platform from the beginning will testify to this very prophecy. I said it. I will sacrifice my parents if it means that Biafra will come. That is why I know for certain that the death of my parents is indicative that something very positive is about to happen in the lives of those who are still living. I will pray this very day that Chukwukika Biyama may have mercy upon the living. Because my father was a great man, the man who taught me every moral that I have today, guiding me. I learned from my father that it is a good thing to be incorruptible. I remember in 1979 when MPN were swarming all around him. They gave him then a car, a push you, I'll never forget. Inside the boot of the Poggio was stacks upon stacks of money. They asked him to defect, to abandon Mbakwe and defect to Mwakamokoro of MP. And I remember it very vividly, like it was yesterday. And my father said no, that he will not take it. That he will remain with MPP and make sure not only Honorable Gio Nyamobi from my village, that he will go through as the House of Assembly member that also Mbakwe himself will be elected as the governor of Imo State then. Because Mbakwe, it transpired, my father told me, was a war veteran and a genuine Biafran. That he will not abandon his people. That MPN was al Majli party. That he will never ever consider abandoning his people. That was where I learned most of the things that I know today. That it is good to be honorable in all that you do. That is why the road in front of my house is not tired till this very day. All parts of my village. But the one that leads to my house is not. Because my father, Ezeza Aokanu, could not be bought. They didn't buy him when he was alive and they cannot buy him now either. That I can assure you. We are prepared for this. And he told me what to do in the case that we wake up and we don't find him anymore. That is exactly what I'm going to do and that thing is Biafra. He taught me not to have any sentiment when it comes to Biafra. That the only thing that matters is the end result that Biafra is liberated. That is the best way that I can honor him. That is the best way that myself and my siblings, my family can honor him. That is the best way that my community can honor him. That is the best way that my clan can honor him. That is the best way that this very noble family that I love so much, this IPOB. Sometimes I see IPOB not as human beings, but as angels sent from heaven to do the will of the almighty creator of the universe. We must honor them. 
we must honor my parents by working very seriously, diligently, and determinedly towards the restoration of Biafra. Therefore, I pray in the language of the ancients, because my father is a traditional ruler. You know me, I don't like the word king, because I believe that every man and woman is born equal. I don't believe in that dichotomy. So I see my father as the leader of his people and as a custodian of our culture and our tradition, I will pray in the language of the ancients. I will pray in Igbo language. Those listening all over the world must bear with me because that is the language of heaven. When we say it, they go mad. All these Janjaweed from the desert, they don't understand because they are not blessed. Everything that we preach on this platform is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That is a fact of life. We have not lied before. We don't intend to start now. That is why we are whiter than white and whiter than snow. If you know that thing we did, you come out and say it in the open. So we can respond to you. This very evening we pray for the safekeeping of this Biafra restoration project. For the preservation of those who are innocent, for the repose of the soul of those that have fallen along this very journey, and that they may be watching over us from heaven, from the right hand of Chukukikabia, my God Almighty Himself. Perhaps if they cannot protect us here, they can do so from heaven in spirit. Therefore, Chukuki Kabiama Purumi Henine Onya Mona Madunefe Onya Nemogi Hobuleja to Nereni in Obunana Yabuaka, Obogabo Malitan Ogum, or Fodden de Namai Hessen at Chineca de Nwene Lendi de Tuanya Nwene Eugene Sihani Hinandi de Tuamagina. And you were now seen on your woman, Machina can and kept me here in the Ekun Rewesiki, a wedding, a wedding. Of a bear cookie, Cassie wear potter, more boys than I can saw your young woman. And you were near Ruberry, see where now for cookie, now so my own yard, the Kagichina can and key wear. Oh, when he hope led your matter, so no be a year, or Ponani Kerry in the Kerekam and Magonia Kerry, Nanke Branagan Masuri in there. They go to get a fit this way of crossing, come and make a leg and call John Mayaka leg. I'm one of your Nanam Nanamano and watching Catonio Machina can keep well, and I may not hand so good to the Soprone Jamma, and I must see any name at the Machina can. Any name, Madame, on your whim, or Bonani in there with an anagin there with a Nanke. And you win it in Uong. We're not saying hallelujah, not an igwe. Nihin and then so I got the new one and kept bread in Gozi. Before then, they didn't drag a lot of yanni in a hand of any memoir. And you want your bundy carriage in yanni in memoir, say the bread in Gozi. Bundy never go on or not watching Ketana saying and kept bread in Gozi because Yaki went and I could be handled. The Como IP will be Bundelaras on a German canyon and gaze and days that Yaki went and I could be handled. Le kumo geno wani nem nanke dengo zi onye mwem na chine ke nanke gwe bundi ne rubi isi nukuro nge gyo mwisi we hazie ya Bia ki we le tendi de tuwa ma le tomu mo hane zino lo han nanke bre dengo zi Bia kwa ki we bule IPO biye lu We karya kanyo wanyi si we tuwa nye chine ke nanke dengo zi Ongu gyo wakine tino kun son ke gini mendege bundi gyo wakine oro kun nanke bre dengo zi Nkanyo wanyi bo funi me ha nanke bre bikono Wego kwa blanke si muku wonke nana gabye na mezu Obu stani mamage ne bre ya mra geno mi Mikoi, I say we better in Gozi. No basu sundi bo kanye naso. O for that poge egoti yen nanke bere in Gozi. Chine ke nanke we biko. Beki we me ranya marage. Kucho biki we me zoni me ndo anye. O buki ki ken kaka ni we me. Kamo buki si we cho yen nanke bere in Gozi. Ani we na do eka biafra we bena bo in kanye. Ki hile we burun kendi ngon. Ki yagi we batani moe. Itiribo biafra nanke bere in Gozi. Ni hino bo do runyi we bo chichere. 
ki hege ne mama ye we bata ko mu we jua nyo ve na chineke na nki we ko mu ri we ku ni we gota ne zie ne zie no bu jo we yi bu onye pa ni ni huwe na ga njema o mu ri chozo nka ni ne fe we zuga ni anya na ge fa arusi anya na ge fe ni oble jaka we me o bu na ni ge be zendie ze no him adona ye shada chuko ki ka bia ma bu onya ni ne so na ro tuto na so pro ne ja me li gwe na ro tuto na so pro ne ja mo no bu na ni ya wa no tu onye Chineke nan kusini lenke ndi aga. Ebele ye. Nan gozi ye. Amana ye no mi kogi kanyina. Ado ni isi IPOB no wani neze bube de ngozi. Ebru wom IPOB we tine ye naka na bali ya. Mande ani jetele mande ani ne chetege. Mande putari ye mande la raso nan ke bele de ngozi. Chineke nan ki igwe. Ki we da ki we gozi ya anye. Nan jemu kanyina gabu nke do mwere rop tere ze bube de ngozi. Omoge mbo planyi ji we wori kakanyi we kuniye. Sinanye gacho biya freze bube de ngozi. Obu sile na mwana ge chineke nan ki igwe. Ko tuto ni nina na nsopu nini na uru bisi nini ni kuisi ala nini na mbuli ya helu dire so sa hanso go negre li gwe no uwa chukwa ki ka bia ma puru minhe nini uwa ma uru mbuni nini ebi ebi kai na ajo jise 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 media so rest in perfect peace jise we must proceed this evening Determinedly as ever. Because before we came on air, Amakego sent me something from the presidency of the zoo. I regard them as the headquarters of misinformation and skullduggery. They commit a crime. They keep asking who committed it. I saw the nonsense they wrote in response to their barbarism and cowardice against Shawere. The Nigerian army DSS, their police, they have never fought any war before. That is a fact of life. The problem that we have, the problem that we will continue to have, is that the way we reason is flawed. When I say it, black people don't understand. Black African people do not understand there is something defective in our reasoning capacity the way we process information is fundamentally flawed that is why we are backwards africans we must ask ourselves this question why is africa poor why are we backwards why is it where we come from no good roads no hospitals no schools no electricity life is... ask yourself why the problem lies in the way that we reason. As simple as that. Because the same school that the Europeans went to, the Asians went to, South Americans went to, everybody went to, is the same school that we also attended. Don't forget that. Now, why is it that the end product is always wrong? It's always flawed. Ask yourself that question. Any day you understand it, any day you sit down and you look yourself in the mirror and you say, the way I have been reasoning and processing information is flawed, that day you'll be a changed person. Do you know why the Western world allows criticism all the time? For you to criticize those who are in power, those who are in office, is because that is how to make them better. I don't allow people to criticize me. I do that first myself. That was why the starting point of the formation of IPOB is that there is something wrong with us in our brain. So we must correct that defective gene in our brain before we can advance. The white man knows this. That is why most of them are against Biafra because they understand it. That we are the only people who are capable of reasoning at this very level. It is called critical self-appraisal. And why am I starting with this today? Because the way you handle and you process information is very key. That determines a lot about who you are. That determines how you're going to solve a problem. If you stay in a society where you have coal, you have gas, you have oil, you have abundant solar power, or should I say energy from the sun, and you don't have electricity, and you have universities, you have politicians, you have those you foolishly refer to as elites, then there is something wrong with you as a human being. There is something wrong with you as a human being. 
if you live in a country when the colonial masters were there, you had pipe-borne water. You can go home and open your tap and drink from it. And in the 21st century, your only access to potable water is via a borehole. Then there is something wrong with you and your brain and how you process information. If you sit down in a country as backward as the zoo and the police come to your house to kill you with the army and the people, instead of asking the army and the police, what were you doing in the person's house with guns anywhere in the first place? They now turn around to completely ignore those that were killed by these marauding criminals. That society has a problem. Their mental capacity is defective. They have issues processing information the right way and they will remain backwards forever and ever and ever and ever. Ask yourself this question again. Why was it that in the whole of the world, only in Africa was slavery commercialized to the extent that people sold their children, to the extent that only five white people, only five, five of them, they will anchor their ship somewhere in one of the coastal regions of Biafra, only five white men, they will go to the first village, they will recruit us, we black people, whites will recruit us, we now go into the hinterland to catch our own people for them. They will be there watching us, it's black people that will put chain on black people and drag them to the ship to be shipped away to the Americas or the Caribbean for slavery. And before the Europeans came, the Arabs and the Muslims were coming, some of you don't know this. There is a market at Nike. Some of you know Zakole very well. Why am I digressing a bit? Is for us to try and build some kind of um, an understanding as to where our problems started from as a people. There is something wrong with the way we reason. Black people. There is something wrong with our brain. And this night I'm going to prove it. I am not here to make people feel good. If you don't want to listen to Radio Biafra because I tell you, so, uh, it's the way he does it. How do you want me to do it? They've been pampering you for the last 200 years, telling you, oh, you're nice, you're sweet, you're, you're intelligent, despite the fact you have no light in your village, no good schools, you're walking about in rags, you can barely feed yourselves. You're telling you, oh, everything is fine. That black is beautiful. I don't subscribe to that rubbish. It's nonsense, pure bunkum. If you cannot demonstrate how beautiful you are, that is pure rubbish to me. I don't believe in sentiment. If you won't listen to Radio Biafra, that's entirely your business. I don't give a damn if you do or not. But the truth is constant. It never changes. And that is what we preach here on this platform. That is what we preach. That is why Radio Biafra is the most listened to radio station coming out of Africa. Everybody listens in Argentina. Professors are sitting down right now to listen to this very broadcast. Because they wonder, are you sure these people are from Africa? Why they? Because if I don't castigate myself, I'll never change. Because if somebody else does it, just like Alamajiri, if anybody tells them that Alamajiri, you contribute nothing, Fulani, you are, you contribute nothing to the growth of the zoo, they see it as an attack. They don't go back and sit down and ask themselves, is what this, what these people are saying, is it true? People cover themselves with the cloak of ignorance and cowardice. Thinking we'll do the same. As I said before, and allow me to repeat, Live on air this evening. Alamajiri, Fulani, Khalifa, those Janja, they can do whatever they like to preserve the zoo, but Nigeria will break into pieces. The name Nigeria, when I say something, please write it down on a piece of paper. So when it comes to pass, the same thing that happened to us, Ojis Okalo, people will remember and go and dig out the broadcast and say, at so and so, they the Kano said so. Write this one down. By the time we finish with the zoo called Nigeria, the name Nigeria will no longer exist. Write it down on a piece of paper. You don't know how far we have gone. It's not everything we come on air to tell the whole world about. You don't know how far we have gone. And we will continue on this path until the zoo crumbles. Because had the oil in Biafra land been in the north, there would be no Nigeria in the first place. Ordinary presidency, look at the way they're holding it. Imagine if Fulani had oil and coal and gas, it won't happen to us. I'm saying this for those who are idiotically, I would say, still identifying themselves with the useless 
nomenclature Niger Delta, South, South, Bendel, and all that rubbish. People who are so stupid they cannot reason very well. Look at the way Fulani is handling power, customs, immigration, customs they are ahead, immigration, police, army, everywhere, navy, everywhere you go to is only Janjaweed and Almagiri from the north. And now I'm asking you this question. If they are behaving this way with ordinary political position, imagine what would have become of everybody had the oil in Biafra land, the oil in Ewewa, in Uguta, in Anambra, the oil in Enugu, the oil in Abakaliki, the oil in Abia, the oil in Imo, the oil in Akwaibom, the oil in, in Cross River, the oil in Rivers and in Bayosa, the oil in Delta. Imagine if that had been located in the north. Do you think Fulani will talk to you? All of you foolish people talking about one Nigeria, I mean, I believe in one, we Nigerians. I feel sorry for you because you're insane. When somebody says they're a Nigerian, I see them as lower than a vermin. I'm telling you before God and before man. When you say you're a Nigerian, all oh, heaven knows you are lower than an animal. I'm telling you the truth. You're telling me that a white man can come and create a nation for you and you will stay in it and be very proud of it. And when they go back to Britain, they are laughing at us. They are saying, this, can you see those monkeys? We gave them Nigeria and they are asking, you people, you have no brain, you cannot reason. No brain, your thinking faculties are gone because you're black. You don't criticize yourself. You don't ask yourselves questions. That is why a policeman can leave or leave the police station. Go to the first house and go and kill people. And what matters is, oh, two, two policemen are dead. Did you ask the police? There is something where we come from. What were you doing in the man's house? What for with guns and bullets? What for? What crime did he commit? He is a barrister and attorney at law, for goodness sake. And has cases all over the place. In every zoo court, he goes there to defend our people. You went to his house to kill him. You went to his house to kill him. And everybody around there, the same thing they did in my house. But as some of the mistakes that we are beginning to make, I will say this thing to all the people of the zoo called Nigeria. All those animals in the zoo, they call themselves Nigeria because they're animals they cannot reason very well. I warned you all the way since the beginning of this year that what the Fulanis are doing to you was exactly what they do to our Wasa people. Some of you are so foolish, you have not even gone back to history to go and research what they did. You know what they do? They pick you off one after the other. They take those who are most vulnerable, those who are very weak. They take them and they cage them. They are holding shoulder. Instead of you to fight as a freedom fighter against injustice. What are you? Uh, uh, Shawere said this about Jonathan. Do you remember what Shawere said about him? You are talking absolute people and nonsense. That is how you reason as a black person. Because you cannot reason properly. It doesn't matter. Once you see an injustice being done anywhere on this earth, you rise up and you go against it. That is what makes you a freedom fighter. It's not selective judgment. You select those you like and those you do not like based on what they said four years ago, five years ago. Are you not foolish? Are you not foolish? You are telling me that in a country that has democracy, some people who don't contribute one dime. I asked in Alamajiri, what does Sokoto State contribute to the coffers of Nigeria? The answer is zero. But they are the ones telling you that they can be president for life. It does not hate speech. People condone, you are condoning them. I don't know if it is out of cowardice or stupidity or misplaced or misguided sense of patriotism. Only God knows in heaven what fuels this level of, of depravity and stupidity in black people. In that part of the world. I don't know what is wrong with you people. There is something wrong in our brain. And this night will correct it. Abali will fix it. This night. Because there is something wrong with us. They will not ask. People that call themselves. Newspapers or should I say. Uh, journalists in the zoo. Did anybody listen to what I said before said. In this video. It had nothing to do with IPOB. Absolutely nothing. Did you hear when Barrister Joffor said that the deep, the area commander, whatever rubbish they call him, the ASP or whatever, you know, came to his house 6:30 a.m. that same morning 
Are you listening? Or is China's television, are they deaf? Are they deaf to the reality? And I say this thing with every sense of, of, should I say, responsibility. Because you know me, I always speak the truth. You may not like it, but that's entirely your business. I will always tell you the truth. There is a way that certain sections of Yoruba media behave that you will think they are working for Lucifer. Allow me to repeat. There is a way that certain sections of Yoruba media behave when it comes to Biafran people that leads me to believe that they are not, heaven knows they are not human. They are more than evil. China's television wrote, as soon as police arrived at the house, armed men suspected to be IPOB members descended on the police, set ablaze one, one patrol vehicle and attacked them with rifles and machetes from the Yoruba media. When we say they say we hate Yoruba, we don't. Fanny Kayode is marrying one of our daughters. And the whole world knows I love him. When Fayoshe came out, we loved him. Paya De Banjo, we went to his birthday. Some of you don't know this. We went to his birthday last year and we supported him. And once people are good, we support those. Once you are good, we support you. We support girls like Zali to regain his freedom. It doesn't mean we are Muslims. People must understand you must rise up against iniquity and injustice. It doesn't matter who is affected. It just does not matter. It is the right thing to do. That is why OBS will rise up and fight for Chibok girls. Because that was an injustice that she wanted to see corrected. Some of you don't understand this, do you? Because you're black. You, some of us, school in Africa, and we don't have any soul. There is no conscience. Why do you think we are backwards in Africa? It's because we have no soul and no conscience. That was why we fought for South Africa to become free, and when they became free, they started killing us. That is why people can forget the treaties they signed and close the borders. That is why people have no regard at all for this so-called Pan-Africanism. They are burning our shops in, in Ghana and a few other places. Do you see how blacks reason? Do you see there is something wrong with the reasoning capacity of black people? Do you understand it now? The same thing is happening in the zoo. Anybody against taunting Shaore or making fun of him, you are you you are you are a very you are a, you are a disgrace, not just to humanity but to yourself because you're a fool. Do you know when they came after me? Not minding that Sahara reporters was against IPOB against me when I was arrested. Am I not campaigning for him to come out? I was in the US. Every senator I met in the USA, I said every, every senator, every congressman or woman I met in the USA, I raised the issue of showing. I said all of them, this thing you're seeing happening now, I, I said personally I did. And I will continue to do it until he's set free. Not that he will be set free so that the editorial um, dimension of his uh, newspaper style reporters will change. No, not at all. They can write whatever they like. There, was, there is somebody who always possesses me from the U.S. When I was in the U.S., I spoke to him. He said, oh, I said, no, continue to write in the manner you're doing. He was shocked. He said, but I can sense you all the time. I said, yes, but continue to do it. Because that will remind me that I have something to do. That there are those I need to disappoint by making sure that Biafra comes to the in every honesty. That is how I function. He is an ardent critic of what we are doing and of IPOB of myself. When I spoke to him on the phone, I told him, please, you must continue in that vein. You then never ever stop deserting me. Please continue. Because that's what drives me. But as a black, other black people, once you're criticized, you, you lose your senses. You start looking for who to lock up. Somebody called for a minor revolution to, for people to come out and rally that they're not happy. And some of you idiots are supporting the government for clamping down on that very person. You are not well. That is why you have no electricity in your village. That is why you have no running water. That is why some of you went to glorified commercial schools in the name of universities because you don't reason very well. You don't understand anything. When Delegua was writing, as small as I was, I supported Delegua. 
until Babangira killed him. Babangira killed him, you did nothing, as usual. Let's move on to 2023, 2098. That is how, is that the only thing they teach in your schools? Let me not digress too much. Let me go back to Barista Jofo and all the nonsense that the zoo, zoo people are doing. They invaded the Barista Jofo's house, everybody knows that very well. But if you look from the way they're writing about it, you will think IPOB actually went to police station and killed police people. Nobody. That is why black people, black Africans are so wicked. Nobody asked the policeman, what did you go to the first? He's a, he's a lawyer, for goodness sake. All of a sudden, the Jaffa is now uh, one IPOB member. Do you see? Do you see how evil people are? And how deceptive the zoo can be? One, 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 if I need Joffo, if I need Joffo, the only person that brought out his client, his high profile client from detention. El Zagzagi is still there. Dasuke is still there. Farana is a senior advocate. He's still fighting. Farana, they even insulted him by coming to court to pick up his client. But if I need Joffo, he's the only man in the history of the zoo under this current zoological republic you have now under the Daura Caliphate is the only person to bring out his client alive safe and well from the prison for your information that is the person they are referring to as one one infinite your for a policeman that nobody knows his name he's referring to a Jofo that is known all over the world as one infinite your for why would a Jofo need to hide from the police He's committed no crime. I want the world to understand what transpired in Orifite because all they hear is good, not hear come. They are so foolish. They don't pay attention because I grew up in the village. There is an adage where I come from. If you don't settle down and go through the facts, you will be misled by channels, television, and some other gutter I go by media. Gutter, I call them. A nation that gets its news from China's television is doomed to fail. Doomed to fail. You will always fail. Because they are full of liars and deceivers. All that matters to a black person is his family. How to take care of his children. You want your children to go to private school, but other people's kids to go to the primary school. So your family will continue to rule forever and never not believe in that rubbish. That is what Channels is trying to do to some of you. Channels is the, is the instrument, is the link through which this al caliphate wants to destroy your brain. They first destroy your brain, they come in, they take your land. The next time you have no home, you have no land, you're finished. Channels, television, evil. They did not put what horrific the community wrote. They didn't listen to what Barista Jofo had to say. It had nothing to do with IPOP. It's about a village. Minabe, people, masquerade group. It's nothing to do with IPOP. But all over the even, even people that I respect, and I will not, I will not say anything bad about Amnesty International because they are very good, at least impartial. Amnesty International, because the case had to do with IPOB lawyer, it must be IPOB. Amnesty quickly tweeted, IPOB, because the, are you trying to buy favors from the zoo government? I'm asking Amnesty in Abuja, are you trying to buy favors? Because I don't believe in Okom Nasukum Nerunala. If you are not going to stand on the truth, you get away from the road. We move on. I am talking to Amnesty. If you cannot stand and speak the truth, ask the police, what were you doing in Brestage of First House? What for? With guns, bullets, everything. Uh, he lost. What for? When the same police station, they went to a Jofos house. In the morning, 6.30, a Jofo said, I am coming to see you. It is about a village masquerade. Two people and that corrupt man that calls himself the ego of Orifide. And the maker of four. <laughs> you people are finished. I'm telling you the truth. You are, fi you are finished. Now you will know. You remember Amechi Tibi Kamechi was running his mouth. We got him in Spain. Ask him where his coat is, his um, jacket. Where it is. He's busy lying. Where is his jacket? I am telling a medical firm, from today you're a haunted man, I'm telling you by IPOB. It's an order to IPOB everywhere in the world. Anywhere you get a medical firm, we'll show him. I preached on Radio Biafra before, for those who don't know a medical firm very well. Let me say this. As I told him, I don't know if I can use this as They were those they were going to use as experiment after the war. 
That is why we celebrate, we remember our heroes every 30th of May. Listen very carefully to what I have to tell you. Listen very, very carefully and attentively. You understand this? What the Anamajiri is planned after the, towards the end of the war, with the help of Harold Wilson, the then British Prime Minister, was to kill every male child above 10 years of age. And then groom the other ones in the Caliphate and the Majiri Emirate of Life. And those chosen for the experiment is this Emekofor you're seeing. Go and ask him. When I tell you something, go and do your research. Emekofor was chosen by them. He was the model of how the Alamajiri wanted to conquer the sensibility of an evil man. Get them young, kill all their fathers, their uncles, get them young, nobody to guide them and turn them in Alamajiri way. Emekofor was one of them. Go and ask. He has brought it to the village. I understand he said he's going to set up a group to fight IPOB. Then they'll be buried alive, I'm telling you the truth. I say this openly. I say it openly everywhere I go to. If you come to kill IPOB from now onwards, we'll kill you. We are not involved in helping at your first house. For your information, go and ask or if it's a community. Go and even ask the police. It was only when they, they killed themselves that Nas let him say, oh, it must be IPOB because they know no other group of people have the courage and the determination the way we do in IPOB. When you came to my house and killed 28 on the 14th of September 2017, did we retaliate? We don't retaliate. Did we retaliate? I'm asking you. We had men all over the place that wanted to do many things to the whole of Omwine. I said no. I said no, don't attack them. That's what they're waiting for. And you see this now? They have forgotten about those killed. They have forgotten that the police came and killed people. No! People in, in their own homes, police will come and kill them. That one is not news to Amnesty. It is not news to channels, no. It's only them. Do you know why they're shouting police, police killed by IPOB? Because they want to tell the world, oh, stop supporting them. They're terrorists. They think the world is as stupid as they are. Because the world will ask you, how and where did they attack the police? How, where, when? Then you start explaining. Oh, they were in their homes and we went there and we started shooting at them. Then the world will tell you to go to hell. You're a fool. But channels television ran immediately and wrote because they know that it's only IPOB that would destroy that nonsensical zoological republic. That thing that the Fulanis did to the Awasa people, Awasa helped them to do the divisa, those conquer territories. You cannot do it to Biafra, you cannot. I'm telling Alamajini till tomorrow morning, Fulani, you cannot do it to Biafra. It's impossible. Absolutely impossible. You can you can have as many American force as you like. And the same thing that happened to Ojiz Okali will happen to him. I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it. And what happened to Ojiz Okali? Of course nobody is. But all of them, they could imagine all of you, all of you people running around, instead of supporting IPOB, you're, even if you decide to support IPOB through the back door, as they do in the north, support their people. You can't do it. You don't support us. You come out in the open, you castigate us. Then when you get into trouble, your people want us to fight for you. You get us to be now. Oh, God. Is anybody touching our believer? Is that what you know? Our people are so they don't reason that so foolish. I'm just watching Obiano. Do you see Abaribe? Is anybody you mess with him now? Then you will see how mad we are, how insane we are. Because they understand that Abaribe, Abaribe has not given IPOB one dime. God in heaven is my witness. Not one penny from him. But he speaks the truth. That is all we want. People that speak the truth, always, regardless of the consequences, stay on the truth. And our people will recognize where you are and who you are. Did you hear the zoo when they said they went to Gansi Shawere in 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 Jesus custody to beg him, to bribe him, to drop his agitation, and he said no. That's what they always do. When they arrest you, they come, they start to offer you heaven and earth. I said no, I will not take. All I will give me Biafra. Or you give me death. That's what I said to them. And uh, we are heading for a showdown, and I'm sure the whole world knows it. It's only a matter of time. That's right, it's only a question of time. It will happen. That thing I'll imagine they want, we'll give it to them. That thing they want, they will, of course, they'll receive it. Patrolling around my house, my village, sending Janja with the sending terrorists who cannot spell even their names to be patrolling around my village, that is a waste of time. Complete another waste. You went to Joffa's house. 
Because he, uh, uh, Emeka Ofo told you to go and implicate him. Because they know we have a case. They always do when there's a, a month to a case coming up in Abuja. So nobody will represent IPOB. And then Binta Nyako can do as she pleases. The same people chasing a judge inside a court of law. You animals called Nigerians cannot see. You cannot hear because your foolishness is in your is in your gene, is in your bone marrow. You're so foolish you cannot analyze any information credibly. You can't do it. Because that is how foolish you are. You don't have any brain, you cannot reason. Somebody is in their house and you yourself writing rubbish on social media. How would it feel like in your house tomorrow morning, or should I say this night, DSS will come shooting anything that moves? How would you feel as a human being? I'm asking them, how would you feel? As a, hum as a human, as a person, how would you feel? They came to my house as a result of what they did. My parents are dead. So you want me to love them? I'm asking, do you, you want me to love them? As a result of what they did. My parents are dead. And you, tomorrow you want me to love Nigeria and be happy with one Nigeria. They are mad people. We are... Africans, we are, we are, oh my goodness, we, we, are, we are a disgrace. We need to change the way we reason. We must change the way we reason or else we'll be finished. Look at since we've been campaigning in America, blacks need to be free till today. The same campaign till today. Because the way we reason is defective. They are selling us in Libya right now, this minute. How many hundreds of years after the end of slavery? There's, they're all showing us now in Tripoli. They're selling us in Tripoli now. Will it stop others from going and uh, trying their luck? The answer is no. That's what makes you a black person. You can't reason. You don't reason very well. Not when people say it. They say, oh, it, it, it's wrong. It, you're being racist. No. That is why I don't believe in racism. I went for a job interview in England. Many, many years ago, after, when, I, when I graduated, and they said, oh, we can't do this, you're overqualified, you're this, you're this, you're this. I was just looking at them. When they finished, they said, oh, one person met me and said, I don't think he's right. You should try and fight them. I said, I'm not fighting them. Anything is their country. They can do whatever they like. If they do it in Biafra, then I can complain. This is not my country. We are standing. It's not my It doesn't belong to me. It's out of their kindness that they allowed me to come to their country to study and to work and to make me their citizen. Because they are kind to, to, to that extent. It's not for any other thing. So I'm not going to start arguing with them over if you give me a job or not. It's not my business. If you are, I said to the guy, if I'm angry, I will go and form my own business. I don't have time for useless black African self-pity. We are always pitying ourselves. At the end of the day, we come up with nothing absolute zero. Something is happening in the zoo. No schools, no running water. Life is difficult. Every day you complain. Every day you complain. Do something about it. Nothing. The person that came out to do something for you, Shewere, you abandoned him to go and die. Now he knows there's something called One Nigeria. Nigeria is a parochial society. Everybody gravitates towards their own. It's only the Fulefu Zinibo land in Biafra land that will always go and try and crave acceptability from other people. Only them. That is why they can invade by the Jofo's home. How many lawyers in the north have they invaded their homes? I'm asking you. How many I said? The answer is zero. Because he's representing IPUV. Because he's a Nam the Camus lawyer. That is why they're doing what they're doing. And some of you are hopelessly and foolishly clapping along the way. Because you belong to Nigeria. And Nam the Camus wants to break Nigeria because of that. We will support every injustice against him. The same thing that Sahara reporters did before. Now they're, they're getting it. I said to you, everybody that kept quiet throughout the travails, all the suffering, the pain and difficulties we went through and still going through, all of you will suffer the same. Do you think al will stop? Bukhari is dead. So they're using just the face of somebody that can do whatever they like without responsibility. As I'll prove to you later on. A Geoffrey said they came to my house 6.30 in the morning of that same day that they came to storm his home. Nobody was listening. They came to my house. I spoke to police, a Jofo said. They said they called him uh, to come. He wasn't answering. But they, you, you, came, you went to his house. They will not tell that television that. They won't tell them this, they won't tell them this, that. They will not say that to, to, to the whole world who are watching and keenly following what is going on. Because they believe in lies. They are black and they lie. 
That is why in the Western world you can hardly open an account with a Nigerian passport. Because you people are liars. You believe in lies. You love lying. I don't, and I'm at work, I don't lie. Because you can't do anything to me. If I tell you the truth, you can't do nothing. There is absolutely nothing you can do to me. So what do I need to lie to you? What for? If I tell you the truth, I don't do you. What will you do? Nothing. You Nigerians should stop lying. You people are liars. You love lying to yourselves. A Jofo spoke to the police. The police physically came to his house. And then when he finished, he started burning his house. Which goes to show that somebody from a Jofo's village asked them to burn his properties. To burn his house. That is the new craze. If they invade, they burn. They invade and they burn the houses. People are clapping for them. He is a, he's a soldier. He is a gallant. One stupid idiot. I don't know where they came from. They wrote something uh, on, on, on one of those uh, useless uh, uh, online rubbish. They write. Uh, the, the man is from Bonnie. One of the men killed is from Bonnie. Abbey. And because of that, there is tension in Bonnie between it was The idiot is so foolish. He doesn't know that Bonnie is evil. He doesn't know that. Do you see how their brain functions in the zoo? Do you see why I call Nigerians animals? Do you see why I call it? Because they are foolish. They cannot reason properly. You see that I've been calling them a zoo for a long time. People didn't understand it. Each of you who have now realized why now they cannot call Nigeria a zoo. Because in her own court, where she was sitting, inside the courtroom, these vandals came to abduct somebody in her own court, which is sacrilegious, never done anywhere in the world. She was running and her wig fell off. You know, wig and this horse wig they wear. This white horse that makes them look, I don't know what they look like. They look like I'm not vulgar. It fell off. Everyone in a was. A judge is running from DSS inside the court. A judge running from DSS inside her own court. And you're telling me the country is normal. People are, are pretending I'm a Nigerian. I want to represent Nigeria. As if uh, life is just normal. Are you that? Are you people that stupid? And keep asking God, is this the type of people you put in Africa? Who, what, what is in their brain? Is this sawdust that they can't reason? Very well. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad. Very, very sad indeed, I tell you. Very, very terrible. Unprovoked attack at the Jofo's home after burying his brother. After burying his brother, they came to kill him. And uh, Emeka for things that they would love him. Look at, look at, um, what is Okal? Nobody is more full of it than him. He went to school in the north. But he's a, he's a, he has a very large heart. What is Okal? Forget about all the things. You know, we know about him. He has a very good heart, I'm telling you the truth. But I told him when I spoke, I said, it's misplaced. That love you have for people, invest it in your own people only. Leave this Nigeria. I told him, leave this Nigeria. He didn't listen. I said, okay, you will see. And today he is the only.
criticized and maligned, I love it. Because the more you're writing about us, the more you're writing about me, nobody knows who you are. Don't you know that? Nobody knows you. You make us more popular. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows you. They came to your first home and channels is writing. Rubbish. Yoruba media is writing pure rubbish. And I said it before, if Yoruba doesn't change, I'm telling you the truth, their own punishment will be worse than anything that any other tribe ever went through. Write it down on a piece of paper. Yoruba must stop supporting evil. Yoruba journalists must stop supporting evil. Yoruba journalists, you have seen what happened to show it. You must stop supporting evil. You have to stop. And focus on the truth. Now the kind is fighting for Biafra. I'm not fighting for Dudu. I'm not asking, um, I'm not coming to conquer you. I'm fighting to be free. I am saying that what Britain created is wrong because I cannot go to Britain and create a nation for them. It's not, it's not, it's not just possible. <laughs> Japan is doing well. Korea is doing well because they are in charge of their home. It's their land. But this one, a white man will come all the way from Scotland and then uh, come and build nation and say, your name is Nigeria. And you're, you're foolishly and idiotically jumping up and down saying you're in Nigeria. Are you not insane? Are you sure your brain is correct? Ejiofo defeated them in every court he went to. Only Ejiofo defeated all of them. They bribed him and he said no. Anything they tell him, he'll say, let me speak to my... To my leader first, he'll first call me to say this is what they're saying. I'll tell him to forget those idiots and move on. The only reason for the unprovoked criminal invasion of a Jafal's home to kill him is to stop him from going to court next month. The reason why Show is in detention is because he had a meeting with me. That's all. It's actually me that they are frightened of. They are scared of IPOB. This one family. Today we had a new family in Lebanon of all places. Where by now in Lebanon? There's an IPOB family in Lebanon. And my sister is calling me from Genoa saying, How do I join an IPOB family? All over the world. Now they have realized. People now know. There is not this, uh, I read one idiot. He said, uh, Does it mean that this and them, they can't we hate so much that he's right after all? Of course I'm right. You know I'm right. Don't let your little village envy get the best of you of course you know i'm right and they say oh, but, but he needs to speak and sound more presidential presidential to people who don't understand presidential speech how is that possible do you want me to sound presidential to people who don't understand presidential speech that will tell that channels will tell you that ipob mem uh, members attacked police in a jaffa's home and you believe them when or if they said it was not IPOB, police themselves confirmed it's not IPOB. It's about a local village masquerade dispute which a maker of forgot himself involved in and wanted to use it to burn and destroy by the first home. That's all. But all of you are dragging in IPOB. Oh, it's IPOB. IPOB killed police. IPOB killed police. Who told you that? Were you there? Oh, it's so when we say something is alleged, alleged, we showed you people who they killed. It's alleged, but when police say, oh, well, police attacked, attacked, uh, attacked police and killed two policemen. That is how evil you are. So people that write, Yoruba journalists that write that rubbish, that is how evil you are. And evil will follow you all the days of your life. And Wolo will never become head of state of Nigeria. Do you know why? Because of what he did against their friends. The same way that Inubu can never be the, the, the president of the zoo called Nigeria. If I thought the zoo can stay to 2023, it's not possible. Keep writing your evil rubbish. You will never succeed. Just because you want oil and gas to be flowing. And let me ask those who are from Nigeria that you do so clear. I'm, I'm a Niger Delta. I'm from South South. That thing they're saying. That thing that the is saying. I'm from Niger Delta. All those idiots. How many oil and gas millionaires do you have? How many oil and gas millionaires do Alamajiri have? And how many are in the West? In Yoruba land? How many do you have? That is how foolish. Maybe we are good at doing security oil pipeline security guard. You see how they washed your brains. Messed it up completely. 
that they have starved you so much that the little grain they give you, you're very grateful to them for it. I have said this story many times. I want to say it again tonight. The former governor of River State, Melford Okido. These are people who joined uh, their so-called Gowon, Federal Government of Nigeria, to sabotage Biafra. I had a meeting with him in 1997 in Stratford, in his house in Stratford, in London. Melford Okido, if you know him, MPN in River State. Then went and said, oh, I, I was a who uh, No, not, please, I'm sorry, not I was sad. Full and I don't who protect us. Because uh, I have some people that are victims as well, that messed up. As the same way everyone else is. Do you know what he said to me? He said to me that their, his greatest regret in life, that very day, never, he gave me 120 pounds, I'll never forget. Three of us went there. The former governor of River State, Melford Okido, if you know him, of MPN. He said it was the greatest mistake of their life. That Biafra was the way to go. That we are actually brothers. That we are one, one people. That when 10 people are sharing, that was why he gave me 120 pounds. That when 10 people are sharing 100 pounds, the 20 he gave, he, 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 I don't know it was for transport. He said when 10 people share 100 pounds, it is better than when 120 people share 100 pounds. Understand this very well. Some of you may know Ali Yuekine, his Rakwaibo, learned man. He was the one that go on sent to Britain to go and rubbish Biafra. The daughter I used to broadcast with in 2009, Sokari Ekine, if you know, if you know her very well. He said his greatest wish in life is to have Biafra. <laughs> now they know better. That's what we are preaching. Very simple. A nation of freedom, founded on freedom. On the core principles of freedom. That's what we're looking for. Nothing more, nothing less. They came to kill a Jofo, um, forgetting that the truth will come out. Uh, people are writing rubbish. IPOB this. IPOB killed two policemen. If you want to kill them, we'll go and attack an army barracks and, and kill all of them. Not just to uh, an ordinary uh, 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 locker, as they call them. An ordinary police recruit. A, a zoo without rule of law. They, this our, this, the, the type of grammar they speak, I even don't understand it. In this democracy, we are preserving democracy. You brought a, a, a gun to a law court and you are preserving democracy by bringing armed thugs, government thugs, inside a courtroom. And people. Shineke and this UG, black, black, black people. Oh dear Lord, mercy. Have mercy. They claim two of the officers were killed by IPOB members. But they were all that dead bodies, four in their van. And and bond. So so let me ask them, who drove the car to where to uh, uh, some of you don't even know that the car wasn't even bond in your first compound? It's outside. On the road, another road altogether. Far away from the scene of the action. So you're saying people chase them down there to try and kill them and bond them? People who are unarmed? Some of you think that your petty envy of the successes of our IPOB can, uh, you know, deter us or uh, if I keep uh, eating my own flesh and complaining somehow, uh, IPOB will fall. <laughs> you are dreaming. You are suffering from, you know that typhoid, you know when you, if you have actual typhoid and you dream, then you are in serious trouble. You will be seeing all manner of things. You know if you have acute typhoid, it's about to react to You'll be seeing things that are not real. That is what they're suffering from. Thinking that your petty jealousy and envy can somehow drag IPOD down. You, you, are, you are demented. Your brain is not functioning very well. I assure you. We must proceed this very evening and very hastily. Now, the lawyers are saying that they're going to shut down the courts. And let me tell you what the MBA said. Not because of a Geoffrey's case. But because they invaded the court over Shogun, what did they say? The MBA said that they are dismayed. Listen very carefully. When I call Nigeria a zoo, they complain. But let me tell you how they describe their own country, their own court. We are dismayed at the exhibition of primitivity. When I told you, Fulani is very primitive, you didn't believe me. Now it's from the MBA. Now you can believe me. Primitivity, thuggery, 
is the same passion for lawlessness. And I said it before. In all their lives, the full of them is only move cattle from place to place. They are normal. They drink the blood of the cattle. They don't know anything about law and order. They don't have anything about civil society. It's alien to them. Alien to them. Contempt. This is from the MBA or not from IBOB, not from me. Contempt and disrespect for the rule of law by the agents of the Department of State Services, DSS, within the presence of the Federal High Court in Abuja. As you show you, Bogenema. MBA, they have uh, spoken their grammar as usual. Tomorrow now, they'll call their chairman and say, Hey, chairman, you know that two bedroom flat uh, you're struggling to complete in Agege? Uh, come and take the money and complete it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, go out and say that um, the government is upholding democracy. And the idiot come out and say exactly that. Hunger. A black man who is hungry cannot be in a position that requires you to adhere rigorously to a very conscionable position at all times. I repeat, a hungry black man from Africa, you don't place a hungry black man in Africa in a position that requires one to hold on rigidly to a principled stance. Or else they will sell. Immediately they will collect money and they sell their position. Look at what MBA is saying. They have confirmed that Nigeria is a zoo. This is from the MBA. That they are primitive. When somebody is primitive and you are a thug, it's not the same thing that uh, the lions are doing in Serengeti. <laughs> with, with, other, with zebra and with um, wilder beast and the rest. Uh, with antelope and impala. They, them, they kill them and bring them down. Sometimes the hyenas come and attack the, the lions. That's what is happening in the zoo. Nobody knows which is which. That is why Nigeria is a zoo, a complete and utter zoo, where you have animals with green passports walking all over the place, like headless chickens who cannot reason very well. This is from your own MBA. Indictment from your own MBA. Indictment from your own MBA. Very foolish people. And the foreign have also written about the show the matter. And confirmed it that the judge, he, John Wojuku, was on the run from my own court. Hey, judge, tomorrow. So, DSS only takes people to court. They know they're going to win or where they can intimidate the judges to give them whatever they want. But when the case goes against them, judge, they will say, no, no, they won't obey it. They are keeping Nigeria as one. We must all work to work together towards this. They say that um, Yorubas are suffering. The middle class people are suffering. The houses are suffering in the north. Let us break the zoo. Go and be in your country. We'll give you oil and gas for free. I will get the UN to supervise it. You take oil and gas. We don't. We don't do anything with the oil. Take it for free. We we'll even send oil to West Africa for free. We don't need it because the greatest natural resource is your brain. Is your brain? You don't need oil and gas to become a developed nation, that is for lazy, African, useless, cursed people, like Nigeria is. The only thing you need to develop is your brain. The white matter in your brain contains everything. Oil cannot manufacture a car for you, or build an aeroplane, or give you the technology that it will give you maybe laser or anything of that sort. It's just crude carbon, that's all. You can sell it and eat all the money which befits every frontier economy. I keep, I keep asking people all the time, show me a nation that is properly run by a Fulani man. Show me an advanced nation being run by a Fulani man. You can't show me, can you? But they're telling you they'll keep ruling you. And it's not hate speech, it's love speech. And tomorrow you go to work. They're going to just they call us a funanya, a funanya, one you won't fool. I don't know where it comes from. I'm not even sure if it's even able. They say it's a DSS spokesman. A <laughs> or whatever rubbish the, the, the fool is called. People listen to my broadcast, they say, Oh, he insults, I insult you because you people are. How, so, so when you see a wild animal on the road running, how do you address the wild? You say, Oh, come, let's have a discussion. No, if on the road, you see a, a mad cow charging down on the road, insane cow. You, I don't say to the cow, come, let's have a discussion. I want to put this rope on your neck to control you. Look at her back. People are dumping refuse in the middle of the road. 
all over the place. Checkpoints everywhere, more than over 5,000 checkpoints across Biafra land. You have politicians, you have so-called leaders, nothing is happening about it. You're telling me you're a human being. <laughs> People committing atrocities in the north, Boko Haram, or Fulani headsmen, uh, Iswa, ISIS in West Africa, Al Qaeda in the Maghreb, they're all in the north. No checkpoint. But in the, in the east, there's checkpoint everywhere. And you're telling me you're okay. All you see is to go and write is it's IPOB. The ego of Orifite should be very, very careful. I don't know, maybe a maker of four gives him money every month to sustain him. Um, uh, we saw the nonsense he wrote that he's banning IPOB. We will ban him from Orifite. Then he will know who is who. He should go and ask those who have tried us before what, <laughs> what became of them. The ego of Orifite writing all that rubbish, nonsense. Time will tell. This is Radio Biafra. We are live and we are done. Time now is 21 minutes past 8 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. We are reaching the whole world. On this very day, because what is happening in the zoo is just terrible. And the people cannot reason. I don't know why, why God placed me there, to be honest with you. I have no idea. Because it's a very big punishment. To say that somebody comes uh, or has anything closely resembling an affinity with Nigeria is the worst curse that can befall anybody. Those who are senior advocates are complaining. You come to court. Then where do you go to court? Every day you go to court. Every day you go to court, nothing happens. The judge will give ruling and somebody... Now the DSS decides who, who has broken the law and who hasn't. Are you telling me you're in a democracy? And that, that walrus, uh, Lawan, whatever he's called, that says he's the head of um, Senate. He said, anything that Buhari wants us to do, we'll do for him. Which Buhari? The dead one or the, or the small boy from Sudan? The thing we have forgotten, we were waiting for the right time and then we hit them. Then the zoo will collapse. Mad people everywhere. Mad people everywhere. Now, this is the hypocrisy of the zoo called Nigeria. They are hypocrisy things. And this is why, this is why, I keep saying it. I know some of you, you only have channels television to watch. But anybody getting their news from channels TV, may, may Satan have mercy on your soul. Because you are outside the remit of God's protection. Only Satan can, can help you. I'm telling you the truth. The same Yoruba media, they are reported, they reported, them, headsmen killed five mobile, five mobile policemen, set two patrol vehicles ablaze in Benue. No time did channels tweet. That Fulani headsmen kill uh, police. No Fulani Miet Yala are still living large. Their houses were not burned. They killed five mobile. Even your paper, nation carried it. Tinubu's paper. But if it's in Biafra land, they will say kill. Mon Can you imagine if five terror groups were to come from Biafra land? By now, Britain will station their, their, their gunships in the battle of Biafra and be shelling us from there. Air Force will come, maybe from Russia, be bombing everybody to oblivion. But only the Fulanese, they have five frontline terror groups in the world. And those of you going to your offices saying, yeah, I'm a civil servant, you don't see any of these things. You are stupidly saying one Nigeria, because what matters to you is what uh, the school in Jidak is going to go to, Jidak is going to private school. That's what abhors you. Not what is happening to your people. That is why you're a black person. That is why blacks are wicked. And that is why we are suffering. That is why Africa is poor. Because of the way we reason. The level of wickedness in our brain is unimaginable. Go and think about it. Stop procrastinating and complaining. Ponder and reflect on what I've just told you. And see if it is not true. And then change after doing that. And become a better person. The way we all have to become better people in order to carry this very burden to liberate Biafra. They use the media to destroy our image. Look at how they are pushing this false narrative about IPOB. Because they now have no media. They keep pushing it, pushing it. They keep with this man. IPOB killed. They even went to Amnesty. Can, can you say something now? Amnesty rushed and issued a statement without finding out the facts. It was not IPOB. IPOB was not at the first place. IPOB attended funeral and left. It is a masculine dispute between one and four and a four group inside Orifide. Nothing to do with IPOV. Absolutely nothing. Even the police acknowledged. 
But because of all his uh, Jefferson and McCann's lawyer and IPOB, of course, his, his big news everywhere. Big news everywhere. And they're jumping up and down like like cattle. But they kill five Mopole in Benue. Nothing. No houses were burnt. And make call for. You see, all these affiliates that. Uh, when I was telling our people, I used to say it in those days. And I remember Ohanese writing one very beautiful piece about how, how, how their IPOB say that Ohanese was stopped by, by the Fulani. Of course, they were stopped by the Fulani. They planted them everywhere in government houses, uh, permanent secretary. If you want, you go and kneel down. You saw the pictures of them kneeling down, your so called elites. They're on their knees begging Alamaji. Imagine how they will regard you. Imagine how they will regard you. If they see if they see your leaders kneeling down before them, begging them, who are you then? We are nobody. These are the people you call elite. These are the people you call your leaders. I said, well, I don't want to imagine. I don't want to know. I didn't go to school. They knelt down in front of him and they're begging him for position. And they're your leaders. They're the ones running on Haneza. <laughs> they always kneel down to beg. But I thank you, Koki Kabiyama. It's a lot that kneel down when they see me. Even as they are, this thing is raging. Is them that kneel down when they see me, even those in uniform. When I see them at checkpoints in those days, both army and police, they bow before us. But uh, the same people go and kneel before them, and they are your leaders, and they give them contract to build a new go on HR Express Road, and they pocket the money, and they become millionaires, and and they are doing well. They are the they are our leaders. <laughs> Let Lord have mercy upon your ignorance. The ignorance is too much. But I must preach it so that you will change. Not because I get anybody, of course. Everybody, if you come close to me, I'm not with anybody. Why, why should I? But it's for you to change. To reason like a human being. The white people are preeminent. Western Europe, the Western world, they are the forefront because of the way they reason. That's all. There is no magic to it. You see them, they go to the moon, they go to the sun, they do this, they do this. It's because of how they reason. There is no, there is, it's not about going to native doctor, no. There is no jazz involved. Just brain, how they process information. Oh, there is flooding in such a place. How do we prevent it from happening next time? They bring engineers, they design, they commission, they build. Next time there will be no erosion there. But your own, your, uh, there's erosion. Somebody's in a nearby Pentecostal church, mouthing rubbish, talking nonsense, invoking every spirit in the world. But it's the work for engineers to do. Those that went to school, they tell the engineers. It's their job to assess the work and to do something about it. But some of you will not listen, will you? You're from Africa. <laughs> reasoning, <laughs> reasoning doesn't come very cheap. It doesn't come very cheap at all. An 18-year-old boy was killed because he is not um, Alamaji. The same police, the same Nigerian police, that all of a sudden is now that uh, Channel TV is not defending. 18-year-old boy. Police laughed him for nothing. In him state because he is that same nonsense cannot happen in the north. Some of you have forgotten in your tiny, tiny brains in that zoo called Nigeria that Jordan went to the north and stoned him. Nobody died. Can you imagine stoning the vehicle of anybody from, from the north, down in the east. There is uh, Air Force will come and bomb and cut a bomb everywhere. Or passenger was head of state. He said 12 policemen were killed in Odi. He went there and he carpet bombed Odi. Whereas Boko Haram were busy killing and slaughtering people in the north. In the car rose up to go and bomb them. The north said in the car was removed. In the car was go for fighting Boko Haram. And Jonathan stupidly acquiesced and removed the car. Some of you don't know. So when we go against some of the politicians that don't support us, you must understand why we do it. It's out of anger. They, are, they supported, he, when Buhari was alive, he supported Boko Haram. He was their chief negotiator, for goodness sake. These are people not telling us about, uh, uh, IPM is a terrorist group, they want to make the, but Buhari, when he was alive, not this Jubril, this little boy that Abakia brought in for you, gullible fools to be following. Have you forgotten that Buhari was the named chief negotiator for Boko Haram? You have all forgotten. Zoo people, you have forgotten. What do you know? You have all forgotten. 
an 18 year old boy killed in Nemo State by police. Channels did not carry it. No nation, no, no Yoruba paper carried it. No Yoruba TV, no. Because the boy is Igbo. Nobody gives a damn about him. He is not Fulani. And he has a lot to contribute to the zoo more than any Fulani. Or more than all Fulani is put together. These are the things we learn every blessed day in the zoo. Nobody will write about it. Amnesty will not tweet about it. So the boy is not a human being. Those four people that they killed from IPOB, or in fact they just wasn't that hand, with their cops all over the bushes, they are not human beings. They're, and why didn't give birth to them? It's only Nigerian police that, 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 that were born, not these people. Do you think under my leadership that will allow any IPOB life to be wasted without, without holding those, those responsible to account? Is that what you think? One Mr. Bassi and one Mr. Ye one Mr. Who? Who are they? Where do they come from? One Mr. Bassi. Mad people. Mad people. As somebody will say that uh, that uh, that uh, Jubril is shining. That shiny bubble. Look at his hands now. And tell me he's um he's 82. Look at his shiny hands. You see if everybody is blind, deaf, and dumb in the zoo. After Jubril came. And they saw that this man cannot be Buhari. And I said, I knew that that, that was the day. Believe you me. Eh? I sat and I asked God, tell me the formula you used to create black people in Africa because there's something wrong with us. I'm telling you the truth. Before God and before man, there is something wrong with us as a race, as black people. We are insane, I'm telling you. That boy, you can see the back of his hand. You can see it. You can see that he's not as old as they made, as they made, to, to, made him to be. You can see it with your bare naked eyes. But Yoruba is presented with oil and gas from Biafra land. That is all that matters to them. How this why you have no Let's then tell them. If, if you don't give us this job, you, you know an evil man will come. Oh. What stupid what stupid country is that? These are the things people are afraid to say. I will say it because it's the truth. If he's spending you, you go and change. If it is spending you, you go and change. You go and change. Because we are unbuyable. Unbribable. How much are you going to for? What stupid money? What do I need money for? What stupid money do you think? Do you think I'm an ordinary? Do you think I'm a typical black African? Is that what you think? Because I'm not and I can never be. I went to Sukan and I told my father, this is not investing here. I told my that this thing here is not investing. Let me get me out of this place. Let me go and uh, where people reason and study. That's how I went to England. If you don't know. Because people cannot reason. How can you say you are in a university? You are a graduate. You are a professor. You cannot reason. You read elections for illiterates to be in power with a certificate. And you say you are a professor. You are a lecturer. You are you are VC. Vice Chancellor. Mad, mad people everywhere. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a proud Nigerian. Proud of what? Proud of your of your imbecility and stupidity. Proud of proud of what? I'm asking you. Proud of what? Proud of what? I'm asking you. I'm a proud Nigerian. Proud of no electricity. Not even simple governance. Simple to obey court order. That even Abacha, the darkest days of Abacha, Abacha obeyed court order. Not this very one. Because Buhari is not there. It's about Kihari and the Kabao. That you are too foolish as a Nigerian to be able to reason properly. And I can't help you. I cannot help you. I'm telling you. Even Jonathan is now complaining. When I said no election, they said, oh, you're taking money from, from, from APC. Okay, go and vote. You're taking money from PDP. That's how useless they are. Even Jonathan is now conceding that African politicians that have replaced crew now, with, they're going to... And, oh, my God, it's unbelievable. Exactly what I told Jonathan in 2015. That these people, they have the mindset of Islamic Brotherhood. Once they get into power, they won't want to leave. I told him to go to Inuka and declare Biafra. They will ask you to stay in office forever. He cowardly did not do it. Today he's now reduced to just complaining and rambling on the on page of newspapers. They said, I'm not insulting anybody, I'm just telling the truth. African politicians replacing military coup with political coup. That's what they're doing. So, all you need to do is, if you want to be a governor, a senator, a house of reps member, quietly go to Sokoto or to Dawa, go and kneel down, 
let them tie to ban on your head. And then they wear your level of betrayal. If it's very high, then they give you that position. That's what they do. Some of us think, uh, our, our, our uh, distinguished senator, I look at the, these morons and I laugh at them. Distinguished what? From where? This one that they tied the bandage on their head do, before they made them their senator. All they need to do, look at Gogi, look at Bayesa, look at every election, look at Edo, look at Hoshu, look at Ekiti. All they need to do is to sit down quietly and write the result by INEC and say this result here is valid. Oh, it's democratic disposition. No, if you're not happy, don't do anything. Just quietly go to court. In that very court, they have all their judges appointed by themselves, confirmed by themselves. Then they, they will fund them and say, um, uh, this person should go, that person should not go. This one is a, is a high value traitor to their people who he should go. He, moving forward, he will win him in the Senate. The day you come out and say, oh, like Koji Sokado did, I want to be the president of Nigeria, they will organize and put you in jail. Because every politician in the zoo is corrupt. All of them from it is everybody. Look at Tinubu with bullion fine in his house. He's not touched. Oh, who did this to our people? Who did this to our people? Even Jata is lamenting. Now, if you say to them, the best way to stop this problem is by making sure that you paralyze the electoral system. Don't vote. So let us get this whole thing right. <laughs> they won't reason. They say, no, but if you don't vote, you can have. If you go and vote, they will rig it. It doesn't matter what you do, they will go in, they will write the result, and that's it. Still, it would be a, and your average, typical, idiotic Nigerian will never get it. Never ever. You can explain from now till the kingdom come, they won't get it. It's a, it's a democratic right. Go and get your PVC. Don't let them deny you of your PVC. They kept disturbing me every blessed day. I said, okay, people should go and vote if they want. And look at it today. Everything rigged from top to bottom. They only allow their, their puppets in office. And that is the prelude. And now they have come. They have come. It's payback time. I thought you were so Easy. Uh, if you, he's a nice man, to be honest with you. He has a good heart, though. Don't get me wrong. Honestly speaking, he has, all you are in his heart. His heart is good. But it's the execution that is flawed. You know, I, I pray that Biafra will come on time so we can bring him out. We can give Zoo whatever thing they want and bring him out, bring him home. And I'm sure when he comes out, he will be a very more patriotic. I wouldn't say more than myself, more than most people. But I think next time he comes out, he'll be a very patriotic Biafra. He will be. This is Radio Biafra, we're live and we're direct. Even those you thought who, <laughs> you know our people, they, they, one day they make sense and the next day they start talking rubbish. Even people that we respect, like Abakoba, people that we have respect for. He's now saying that, um, <laughs> in India being in Lagos and Abuja. What's in Lagos and in Abuja? I don't know what they give to them. <laughs> I just don't know. Agitation for restructuring is hurting Nigeria, says Abakoba. I won't even bother going into that, to be honest with you. But that is to tell you, our people, that they change. We, we change it not. This IPOB, we don't change. That Biafra we are on is what we are going to, to remain on until it is restored and beyond. People you thought were knew better. No. And in fact, this very case of Ojo Zokalo should serve as a warning and as a lesson to everybody from the East. East, I mean, is Biafra. All the politicians. Your counterparts in the North are the ones sponsoring Boko Haram. They are the ones sponsoring ISIS in West Africa. And the funny thing is that every aid and every grant from the Western world goes to the North. <laughs> they have done it very cleverly. They even came out openly to tell World Bank, you must carry out all the investments in the North. The World Bank came out and confirmed it. And so people are saying they're still in one Nigeria. We are Nigerians. I, can't, I, can't, I just can't understand it. Nga man, the former Enugu state governor, they said he stole money from Enugu state. But the properties he bought, rather than returning it to Enugu state, they're taking it to federal government. See how clever they are. None of these people ever supported IPOB. No, no, I said not one single soul. I'm saying it live on air. If you did, come out and say it tomorrow. 
They didn't support IPOB. Nothing. This none, not one single soul. But all that money that should have gone into Biafra agitation won us friends all over the world. Given us every arms we need to defend our homeland is now going to federal government of Nigeria. Do you see how stupid they are? Oh, leave IPOB. They can't do anything. We, we are here. We are Nigerians. All of us are Nigerians. Look at it now. But in the man, you are being prosecuted. You are being prosecuted. But your fellow friends you served with from the north, the Fulanis, they are not touched. And you don't think there is something wrong? You don't think there's anything wrong with it? If they have any brain, they should just um, join IPOB. Go through the back door and say, how do we do this? How do we support, even if our names are not going to be known? How do we do this? Because it's only IPOB you have. We are fighting in neighboring state. One of us was beheaded yesterday. If you don't know. In fact, I'm Chinasa, I wanted to circulate Chinasa Woru. I wanted to circulate that very picture of our brother. With his name, before they say, oh, he has no name. With his name and his village. He was beheaded yesterday. Beheaded yesterday. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Chinna Samur, I wanted to actually spread this very news. Our brother's name is, his name is Chibike Ojoko. They call him a bear. From Ndomafo village in Iwago in Izi, LGA of Ebony State. He was killed by flying headsmen yesterday as, in, as they invaded his village. Some of our youths are still missing from that very village. Izi, they attacked yesterday. They killed Chibike Ojoko and they cut off his head. The picture is there for the whole world to see. And, and channels is busy writing nonsense. Yeah, police attack IPOB. They won't write this one. They will not write it. They will not write it. Anyway, as I have said, any boy you catch, a make call for, you give him the IPOB treatment, but very serious. Very serious. We want the police to be called at the scene of the uh, of, of of that very event anywhere he's seen in america in europe anywhere we catch a makeup for he'll be eaten alive he's finished then he will know that little village vigilante he wants to stop the fight ipob let us see you are going to recruit ipob to fight ipob <laughs> have you asked yourself why their so-called vigilante never works because it is ipob all the way through everybody is ipob everybody from top to bottom is ipob apart from the corrupt individuals and the Fulefus, the Janja wood servants we have, like I'm a call for, everybody's IPOB. So let's see who, who you're going to recruit. <laughs> we want to see. Is it Justin Namani they're holding? <laughs> they're also coming for, for the destroyed debate, I'm sure all of you know that. They're coming for Ifan Yoba. <laughs> Ifan Yoba is also in a very big mess. Ifan Yoba is in a big mess. They want to destroy everybody. Let me tell you what <laughs> Tinubu and his uh, Janja good friends are doing from the north. For those who do not know, they know there is a moral case for them or not for us. God forbid. There's a moral case, uh, the way they see it in their eyes, for Igbo presidency. That's, they feel there's a very strong case for that, given IPOB agitation, that it will stop IPOB agitation. Now, Instead of Tinubu and the North to fight very cleanly by saying what they're saying because of IPOB and then Nam the Canon, we don't think we should give them the presidency and all that nonsense, which is what they've been saying. You know what they've decided to do? They want to destroy everybody they feel because they feel that once the likes of Ojis or Kalun, Namani, or Ba, once they come out and pull their resources together financially to support somebody, that person will have enough ground and enough gravitas to be able to mount a credible challenge so what they've done is called wing clipping they take all your people they feel that has up to maybe about a million dollars or so take all of them away and then you they will not have they will not have the ability to sponsor anybody to come out and run against in 2023 that's what they're trying to do if you don't know let me tell you that's what they're doing start to clip all their wings that's all and the way to do it is by imprisoning every, each and every one of them they feel is rich enough to mount an incredible challenge. But some of you cannot say it because you are blind, you are in a zoo. Your teachers never taught you anything. You never learned history at school. How you manage to come online, some of you sometimes will be writing the nonsense you're writing is beyond me, honestly speaking. Because you cannot reason very well. 
As I said previously, and there's a lot of things I learned from my father that nobody could ever teach me. That's why after God is my father. You know, those of us that grew up in the village, you see, your, your father is a, demi, is a demigod. In those days, you will see your father in the kitchen. He's not going to bathe you. He's not going to tell you, I love you and all that nonsense. But you know he loves you. And you know he, he wants the best for you. I learned morally everything that I know today, I learned from my father. I used to ask my father, why is it that every time people, I go to my friend's house, sometimes when people knock on their door, their father will tell them to go and tell the person I'm not here. I said to my father, why don't you sleep in the afternoon? And when somebody knocks on the door, we can tell them that you're not here. My father will say that that is not a good thing to do. If you don't, he 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 replied me in Iwa Adej. Anytime somebody knocks on the door, you must open for that very person. You don't know if that person is in distress and, and needs your help. You don't know. So you must open. So I asked him, but he said, that is why no policeman ever came to my house all my life. I never saw one policeman there. Even when my father was the king of my people, never, not one, sorry, the traditional ruler, not one person came to say they're making a case. Because they know that his judgment is upright. Nobody can come to them and say, my father took community land and sold it as most other traditional rulers do. Or that he went into, into, into an agreement with the government to impoverish his people. That is not possible. When he was a counselor in the late, in the mid, basically, my father was a counselor in early 60s. All the scholarship they gave him, people can testify to you today that he gave it out to everybody. No, not one single person from my family benefited from it. He gave it to others. My father was a counselor in early 60s. These are the things that people don't actually understand. That our morals came built from home. It's not something we just read or we acquired or we learned. No, it came from home. If your hands are clean, Anytime somebody knocks on your door, you will always open. Because you have nothing to fear. That is something that our people need to learn. And learn very fast, especially those of us who are within IPOB and carrying out this very, very noble work. They are looking for you, family, but none of them is safe. Not one single soul is safe. If they have any brain, they should come and join IPOB, and we all know that. That's what they need to do. Through the, they can come through the back door. Because they can't keep taking them one after the other. It's not just possible. It's not just possible. They are doing to us what Fulani did to our people. They first of all divide everybody, separate the masses from their leaders, and then pick up their leaders one one, and then replace them with Fulani people. That's why everywhere in the Fulani, you have an MA, no longer king, as I keep saying all the time. If you believe in one Nigeria, look at average Awasa. Stop saying Awasa Fulani. That is rubbish. That's not like Awasa Fulani. Fulani houses are their slaves. Imagine if Fulani were educated. Hey, by now we'll be gone. The only thing saving us is their illiteracy and their primitive nature. That's the only thing saving us. From if not by now, everybody will be gone by now. The little that they're doing is because the British taught them how to do it. That's why they do what they do. Or you don't know. They said the government is considering even uh, T.A. Oji. T.A. Oji. I don't know investigating him. All of them, they'll be swept away. Because then IPOB won't rise up and say, no, don't. We fought for the Zia and the Madreke. She's not still in England. We fought. We fought in everywhere we can. She's not IPOB, by the way. But we fought for her. The same way I fought for you, Bori. As you all know. My argument then still subsists till this very day. Until you start putting Fulani people in jail, you have no right to jail other people. As simple as that. They say charity begins at home. Nigeria runs a very parochial, narrow-minded, tribal-based politics. So start from your own people. Because Bukhari is not alive. It is Abba Kiari that is running the show. And they all know it. They all know it. And as in keeping with the zoo and their mentality, they always hire protesters. Some came to court saying, oh, you must prosecute a protester, storm court, demand prosecution of show, and some journalists actually write this nonsense. 
some journalists actually write this garbage. They pay them one one hundred naira. And that's a black person for you. The man in court is there fighting for a better life for you and your children. But the best thing you can do is to come out to protest against him. There is nothing called one Nigeria. And it can never be. Not now, not tomorrow, not never, ever, ever. Can never be. The sooner everybody realizes this, the better for you. They will come to your village. They will pick one man from your village. They use less the fool. They use the fool and they dump him. That's all they can do. That's all they can do. But your lot will never improve. Your life will never improve. I was listening to a Punife senator, I think she is now, um, uh, complaining about uh, the state of the roads in in Anambra or the one in, in Amansia, uh, the linking uh, Anambra to, to Enugu. She's a senator, but she's complaining. She has all the money in the world, but she's complaining. Because those they gave the money to, to build the road, they ate it. And they are your leaders. You're hailing them. You see them tomorrow, you hail them. That they are the, the, the leaders we should all look up to. But the money for the good road is in his pocket. And you're telling me that people are okay. Before we bring the program to a close this very evening, I want to remind everybody of what one of the members of Fela's family, the Kuti family, said. Sheun, you know him, Sheun Kuti. And he summarized it very well. One thing about the, the Kuti family is that they always stand on the side of the truth. That's what I love about them. Always truth. From the mother to Fela to everybody, truth. You may not like what they're saying, but it's the truth. When Fela called the Dullard of Daura, the beast of no nation, people didn't quite understand it. It was the same with the white people that ignored what Fela said and tried to put or put the Dullard in power before his demise and they went to Sudan to go and bring in this new recruit. You know what he said? He said, Buhari's biggest weapon is knowing that Nigerians will never stand up for those that stand up for them. Very simple. What this man is saying is that if you're fighting for Nigeria to save Nigeria, to save the rest of Nigeria, you are on your own. Because Nigeria should not have existed in the first place. Everybody gravitates towards their, their ethnicity, their tribe, or their religion. That's all. They will never stand up for you. But of course, we are IPOB. IPOB put their lives on the line to make sure that I come out of prison. They put their lives on the line to make sure that I live to restore Biafra. Will they do that for a Nigerian? Will they do that for a Nigerian? If we come out, if I announce that I'm coming to a particular place in Biafra land, people will not go to market that very day. Everywhere will be every complete standstill to a halt. We don't give them a dime. Not one dime. Instead, they contribute towards what we are doing. That is how great our people are. As I said before, every generation will remember IPOB. You see that name, IPOB. It will stay forever and ever. Every generation on this earth, man, woman, and child, must revere must pay homage to IPOB forever and ever. As long as there's a Biafran born anywhere on this earth, that name IPOB will be revered until the end of time. If you're fighting for Nigeria, you're on your own. Because the cabal, they know. My only disagreement is that they keep calling Buhari. Bu you know Buhari is there. You know Buhari is no more. You know that very well. But for the fear of IPOB and the Namdekano, Using it to divide Nigeria is why they keep holding on to it. That is Buhari. They know that. They know that. Of course, everybody. If you have common sense, you know it's not Buhari now. Do you need to even see all the wealth of evidence we have to believe? Because you're black. Anything, any day a white man says it now, we believe the white man. When I say that blacks are inferior, people don't understand. Because isn't that the kind of saying it is a, is a black African? Of course, nobody will pay any attention. Any day a white man says it now, you see, they say oh, it's true. That is black people for you. At least if you cannot listen to anybody, try and listen to Fela. Try and listen to Fela. And 
To bring everything to a close this very evening, our people don't reason. When I say that blacks don't reason, I keep saying it every, I've been repeating it this evening. Black people, there is something wrong with our brain. You see, black people, we are, we have a big, we have a debilitating problem. That problem is in our brain, the way we analyze information. You know that Aisha Buhari is meant to be the first lady of the zoo. Aisha Buhari came out in Vanguard newspaper of December the 7th and said, bad people have taken over the country from us. Bad people have taken over the country from us. And you still believe that her husband is alive. You know, the woman, she has given you every clue on this earth. But because, oh dear me, this UG, black, black, black. What is wrong with us? Who took over the country? Bad people are they in APC? Are they in PDP? Is APC not in power? Who are these bad people? This is the first lady. If this thing were to happen in a place like Europe or in America, the, the world will come to a standstill. That's because it's in the zoo. Animals are not interested. They are moving all over the place. Danger is coming. They are busy eating grass. They are busy eating grass. Some persons are using social media to bring down the government, accuse the government of ignoring issues. Aisha, Buhari, the bad people have taken over the country from people who are supposed to be in charge. From the people who are supposed to be in charge. How else do you want her to say it? Before you realize that Jubril is actually from Sudan. <laughs> but it will happen now. One day, you know it's like pregnancy. You can't cover it forever. After a while, it will bust open. One day the truth will be told. And by then, people will come to IPOB, will come to us and ask for forgiveness. We will not forgive them. You see this Jubril saga. One day it will come to a head that people will say, oh, we are sorry, as they are, some of them are saying now. And we go, oh, how are we going to believe what Anam Khan is saying? This IPOB people, how are we going to, I'm ashamed to, to actually say that they are right. Of course, we've been right all along. But we don't like the way they deliver the message. How do you want it delivered? I tell you the raw truth. You may not like it, but it is the truth. And I shall have, have said it many, many times. Rescue us from the cabal. But you people are too busy planning 2023, 2029, 2058, 2099 to realize that your lives are actually in danger. With the time now standing at two minutes to the in the Holy Land of Biafra, I wish to make the following announcement. Very, very important. This is for IPOB only. The following announcement. Please. is a special announcement pertaining to IPOB family meetings worldwide. The following persons are hereby suspended for ill discipline and failure to follow established guidelines. Anybody associated with the bank fiasco in Texas, in America, is from this very moment suspended from IPOB. You see, our people must learn to be disciplined. I remember the scriptures very well. I have it here beside me. When Moshe, that is Moses, after leading the Israelites out of, the, out of um, Egypt through Red Sea and parts of the wilderness, went up Mount Sinai to go and get the commandment from Elohim. Before he came down, people that claimed they know. Because the one who was going up, they asked him, what are you going to do? He said he's going to see... God, for guidance on what they're going to do, for his laws. The people down immediately brought out their necklaces and their trinkets and formed a graven image. So as Moses is climbing up to go and see that God is claiming to go and see, let us form our own here in the meantime. That is what those in America did by trying to preempt us. We wanted to establish a bank, but it's not for commercial banking. It's for a purpose. And I told them in confidence, we want to establish a bank in America for a particular purpose. They went behind our back and was doing their rubbish. All of them are here. Hereby, I should say, from this very moment, removed from IPOB. Suspended. If you deal with them, you join them as well. You know, we are used to it. You talk your rubbish for a few months and that'll be it.
then you go and start opening fake accounts and that'll be it. But if you're sensible, you will serve your suspension and come back and become a better person. If you're associated with any bank opening business, associated with it, you are hereby suspended from this very minute, from IPOB. We have no bank in America. I'm making that very clear tonight for those who are deaf. Let them hear me. We have no bank in America. And those who established or promoted this very bank are suspended from all IPOB activities. We informed some people in confidence about establishing a Biafra bank. I didn't say it was a commercial bank. Never, ever, ever. By announcing the formation of such a bank, which should have been kept secret, they have effectively ruined that very project. It will no longer take effect in the USA. We are a government in waiting. Therefore, we can't afford to allow every ill-disciplined and badly timed project to distract us from what we are doing. Black people are known for petulance and poor discipline. But such stupid attitude will not be tolerated in IPOB. Not now, not never. I didn't say you should not form your own bank. Go and join another group and do that rubbish. There, not within IPOB. Another idiot from that same Texas tried the same nonsense before. And look at where they are today. You don't try IPOB. It is command and control. If you cannot be disciplined enough to follow orders, you get out. We're not here to joke and mess about. In Iguacha, there is one Emeka Mbamara. He is expelled, not suspended, expelled from IPOB. Emeka Mbamara is expelled from IPOB. And the illegal cabinet he set up are hereby expelled from IPOB too. Anybody dealing with them will also be expelled. I warned several that Iguacha is under the coordinatorship of David Njoko and nobody else. No group, no warrior zone, no frontier, no lion squad, nothing. IPOB family, we are one and indivisible. If you like, you can join other fools. But there is nothing like warrior, lion squad or frontiers. It's only one IPOB family under the leadership of David and Joko. In Munich, in Germany, we had some issues. Some people used the name of IPOB to collect money from the Bavarian authorities without accounting for it, but instead chose to spend it on a useless party where they awarded contracts to themselves to fry puff puff. Some people got contracts to fry puff puff. Some did meat pie. With money they collected on behalf of IPOB from the Bavarian government in Munich. Rather than account for that very money or use it for the project that we have back home, people are dying, people are short, we are paying hospital bills, taking care of people. Instead, they called for a party. And when the Bavarian authorities asked them to account for the money given to them, what they did with it within IPOB, they now hastily arranged for a rally. And I gave the order to the European rep that that rally should not go ahead, but they went ahead and did it because they have already committed themselves. If they don't do it, they will go to jail in Germany because you cannot collect money from government to do IPOB project and not do it. That's what they did. You will all recall that I went to Germany early this year. I had meetings with them. I resolved all the issues in Munich. And I said to each and every one of them, you must pay the dues you have not paid. For years they never did some of them never did all the interested in is to be answering coordinator giving people papers who shouldn't have papers giving people assistance not on that not people who are their friends collecting money from people and giving them papers to go and apply for asylum they think that ipob is another zoo project another nigerian project another project full of fraudulent activities we can't, can't, can't allow such rubbish and they know it I won't allow it. They collected money instead of accounting that money to IPOB or at least taking care of our people who are injured or bereaving, bereaved families back home, grieving families and bereaved families back home. They ended up hosting party and frying puff puff and meat pie. These are the people that claim they're hardcore. They know what we are doing. Anyway, of course, we are millions all over the world. So some bad eggs are bound to be found amongst us. And in that very regard, Longinus Amade is hereby expelled from IPOB in Munich, Germany. Anybody dealing with him, you are on your own. Expelled. Expulsion. Complete from IPOB. He committed an unpardonable crime against IPOB. Unpardonable. If you don't know how to follow orders, you shouldn't join IPOB. If you're, you must follow orders.
You must. That is why we are where we are today. Respected all over the world. One chain of command. You must be obedient. You must be loyal to central command. If you cannot be, then you get out. Small armies defeat big armies because of discipline. If you don't know, go and watch it anywhere in the world. Observe it. Once an army is disciplined, they can achieve anything. But if you're not, you, you, go, you can't go very far. We don't need ill-disciplined people. If you know you cannot obey your superiors in IPOB, your coordinators and your reps, then you get out. We don't need you. We don't. We need a disciplined movement to be able to deliver on our core objectives. As simple as that. Your genius, Amadi, is hereby expelled. Frederick Onyale, Sabinos, Waje, Bichi, and Tochuku, Emefu, they are also suspended from IPOB with immediate effect. Suspended! If you support evil, you will be suspended. This is IPOB. We're not messing about here. That ends our program for this very evening. I thank you all for listening. And our security all over the world must make sure that these aforementioned people do not participate in any IPOB activities. They don't participate at all, at all, at all. Until we announce something to the contrary. They don't participate. They are no longer part of IPOB. Thank you very much for listening. You must always know that this very platform, this hallowed and sacred platform, this very IPOB, will restore Biafra. Be rest assured. Have no fear and have no doubt. That is why Biafra is our religion. Biafra is our religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship. And Chukwokika Biyama Binigwe is our God. Thank you for listening from me from here. It is good evening.